Hey everybody, how's it going here? This is uh, your host Michael of Power Playground and we're going to be doing something a little bit different here. We're going to be doing a basically a vlog type thing with uh, going to be showing you all my process of creating my own 3D printer from scratch using uh, materials and 3D printed parts from my existing 3D printer I've purchased full. I've been attempting to do this for quite some time but I've never really been successful doing it. First I tried just doing like a a totally crazy design, but I didn't really, I don't know, I, I couldn't really, the, or the actual files and of course the instructions were a bit ambiguous, so it was really hard to follow. So what I'm, then I tried to design my own printer, but of course just me doing it by myself was, it was a pretty daunting task and it just, something I didn't have anywhere near the amount of time to invest into, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to build a printer based off of someone else's plan, modify it slightly based on some of the parts that I already own. Hope and hopefully, since I have a bunch of parts to build a 3D printer, I don't have to invest too much in the new parts here. So I got tons of these, tons of hardware. Right now, that we're gonna do our first steps. So what I'm doing here, what I'm doing in the printer, if you can hear that in the background, is I'm printing out a calibration shape design here. So give you all a little Oh, sorry, touch screen. But yeah, this particular item here. So this particular item, yeah, it's just a calibration print. So it has little measurements. And I'm going to size it up with my calipers, make sure my printer is printing true. Because I think we're slightly off. I think it's last time I measured it, it was like 90. The scale was like off just by like a small fraction of a percentile. Uh, it's enough to throw off big, long, or large measurements, which can make things a little hairy when you're trying to accurately print a, accurate, a machine that's supposed to accurately print out other things. So yeah, it's a, it can get a little bit tricky here. Okay, so here's the design. It's a Core XY printer. I'll link it to the Thingiverse page in the description. It's very well documented, which I do like. Hopefully I won't run into any snags. It's a pretty simplistic design in terms of uh, functionality. So. Hopefully it shouldn't be too hard to uh, replicate and build. I'm gonna have to modify some things. This is a single extruder or single uh, hot end build, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a dual hot end build if I can. Uh, that'll be preferable for some of the things I want to do because, of course, most things, most printers are pretty, um, pretty standardized to that nowadays. So first of all, what I'm gonna print off here is this hot end carriage. I don't have any of the metal framing or any of the parts. I'm going to order that here real soon, probably when my paycheck hits on midnight. Uh, and then, of course, I'm going to print out those pieces. going to measure it up with some existing uh, hot ends I have. Hold on one second. So I have these here. So hope these are a typical, I think it's like a Mark IV or Mark V J-head design. Um, of course, the heater cartridges and all the, like, the electrical components have been removed from these just because I had to uh, seal them up and insulate them. So hopefully I can get these to work proper. I think I can. It's just, it's all a matter of uh, retrofitting and making sure everything works as well as hopefully these are good. I mean, I didn't pay a whole lot of money for these because I got them off brand from somewhere in China, I think like Sane Smart. So hopefully those will work. Now what I need to do is they have a bill of material list, which is quite a comprehensive list. It shows all the hardware and everything I need, which I have most of this stuff. The only problem is there's a few gaps I need to fill and hopefully I don't have to buy new or hot ends because that's a little, the ones they're recommending are about $80. So yeah, fingers crossed that I can just use these, which of course they should be perfectly capable. They're brand spanking new pretty much. Yeah, I have tons of hardware, just lots of things. I'll go ahead and take you around the lab real quick. Got our uh, logic board here, which that will definitely come in handy. And then this is an in a magnetic Hall Effect end stop, which I'll probably use for Z-axis. And I think there's another LC. There's actually an LCD panel SD card reader in this one, which will be pretty kick-ass to have because my current printer has that, and I do not want to go without that because. Just makes setting up the printer way more easier. You don't have to have a slave laptop uh, telling the printer what to or what to print out. You just plug in an SD card and go, which way convenient. Power supply right up there. Come on, focus. There we go. An extra 430 watt. I'm just going to use an ATX power supply. I have jerry rigged. 
with uh, just these little C-clamp type things here. I have a bus bar for that. Have plenty of rods. I don't think I'll need these, so that'll, those will probably go for sale. Got some uh, spare aluminum, which yeah, I'll, I'll probably need some here. Unfortunately, I'll probably use these for another project, but I have these smaller aluminum bits, but they need larger rails. So I might retrofit those to work for the framing. I don't know. And then we have all the other stepper motors and goodies here. I pretty much have enough to make maybe two printers. Now just plenty of testing tools here. Just show you my office. And just a few bits and bobs. Plenty of power tools. Of course the old drill press. And plenty of soldering stations and things. Of course this is all my hardware. As long as it, and some other electronics I ripped out of another 3D printer. Which there is, I basically I have about, well, and then a whole box. This is like hot ends and all sorts of good goodies here. Barrel connectors, thermal couples, yeah, all sorts of good stuff here. These little MakerBot style hot ends, which they're okay. Some of them aren't machined all that well. So yep, that's pretty much what I got to do here now is I have to inventory all of this and see what I got. Oh, I almost forgot. There's where everything is. So there's a bunch of bearings. There's there's my MK8s. I think those MK7s. I'll have to I'll have to see which one they require. Which I think I have both of. So hopefully, hopefully, I have everything I need in terms of like the extruder, the extruder gear, because I have plenty of that hardware. <clears throat> I just hope I don't have to reinvest into too much, and then. Below all this, I have some heater beds. I have a six inch by eight inch and then an eight by 12 inch underneath the laptop. And that's a piece of glass that doesn't need to be right underneath my laptop. <laughs> Very not safe. Okay, so game plan. First off, we have to calibrate the printer. Sorry for my crap handwriting here. The number two, so number two is print hot end carriage. Of course, um, depending if it's not calibrated, we'll have to make some adjustments. I don't know how to do adjust this 3D printer. I'm gonna try to figure that out. But for now, I'm probably gonna just scale the model uh, according to each axis and how off they are. So we'll uh, print the hot end hot end carriage once we get all that taken care of. And what we'll do on there is we will then we're gonna model the new hot end carriage. So we're gonna make some adjustments, get dual extruders in there. So that's currently what we have planned here. Once we get that done, we're gonna have to inventory existing parts. Uh, basically just what I have right now. I showed you the gist of it. There are a bunch of little bits and bobs I need to make sure I have proper quantities of things, etc. So that will um, that will definitely take precedent here in the next few hours. And that's pretty much it for now. Once I get all these things done, we'll move on to our next phase here. So let's get cracking. I'm going to go ahead and show you a time lapse of this particular piece here that's being printed out. Alright, so our pieces is printed and I went through the inventory. Um, I have a good bit of stuff, but I definitely need to buy a lot of pieces because this requires some specialty bearings. So our calibration piece went pretty good. These uh eight M8 bolts. Oh, this is the crap one. You need to throw that away. So yeah, they go they go through pretty that's pretty tight tolerance on that. I think it prints out a little smaller than it should, but it's like 99.8. Like it's it's pretty close. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put, put out the parts for this hot end carriage here. Now that we have our test print going, wasn't too satisfied with this particular test print, although the bolt tolerances, that is a pretty good little trick here. All right, folks, there you have it for episode one of our little 
vlog here. Hope you all like the progress so far. Gonna be going a lot more crazy things here once we actually get the parts going. I'll show you my process of measuring them, kind of reverse engineering them, and then of course modifying them to my liking. Uh, I'm gonna try to look out for some raw files for these so I can do some modifications to them. Otherwise, yeah, I'm just gonna remix these files in, in some way or fashion. And then of course, just make my own modifications to them to have dual extruders and of course fit my extruders if need be. We'll see the tolerances on that, so stay tuned.